हेलो स्टूडेंट्स नमस्कार वेलकम टू ईपीजी पाठशाला आई एम सतवंती कपूर फ्रॉम डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ एंथ्रोपोलॉजी यूनिवर्सिटी ऑफ डेली टुडे आई शैल बी स्पीकिंग ऑन द मॉड्यूल चाइल्डहुड ओबेसिटी इट्स प्रिवलेंस एंड असेसमेंट फ्रॉम द पेपर अप्लाइड एंथ्रोपोलॉजी ना रिगार्डिंग द ऑब्जेक्टिव ऑफ दिस मॉड्यूल लेट मी टेल यू दैट आफ्टर लिसनिंग टू दिस मॉड्यूल द लर्नर विल बी एबल टू नो अबाउट चाइल्डहुड ओबेसिटी इट्स कॉजेज एंड फैक्टर्स इफेक्टिंग let's have a brief discussion on the introductory part of the topic globally profile of disease are transforming at a hasty pace catching the attention of various medical personals and policy makers this is true particularly in case of low and middle income countries that produce the major chunk of world population among these entities obesity has reached global epidemic proportions with over 1 billion people classified as overweight and of those at least 30% are obese who 2003 overweight and obesity are considered a public health crisis that contributes substantially to a variety of chronic diseases disability and premature mortality during the past decade both prevalence and degree of obesity have increased dramatically among children all over the world though their magnitude varies greatly between and within countries thus the emerging epidemic of obesity and associated comorbidities represent an enormous public health burden with economic and societal consequences of major significance now what is childhood obesity the global epidemic of obesity is involving all age groups There are 22 million overweight or obese children under 5 years worldwide according to WHO 2003 which means that 10% of school age children in the world are affected Lobstein et al 2004 overweight obesity among children began in developed countries in the late 1980s really et al 1999 and more recently the problem has extended into the developing world as well There is growing global child obesity epidemic with a large variation in secular trend across countries as per Wong and Lobstein 2006 IOTF has recently presented decadal increase in obesity prevalence among children across the globe the figure 1.1 here illustrates how the rates of child obesity have been increasing worldwide while the highest rate of child obesity are being observed in developed areas of the world such as north america and western europe rates continue to increase at an alarming pace in many middle and low income countries as per lobstein et al 2004 in 2011 globally more than 40 million children under the age of 5 years were overweight of those around 35 million were living in developing countries as per who 2013 obesity is no more restricted to high income countries but is also rising in a much faster manner in low middle income countries as well the constitution of the developmental origin of health and disease dohad society has drawn great interest to study the public health challenges faced by countries under rapid economic and nutrition transition particularly of those developing countries that have experienced economic development and improvement in people's living standards and as a result a shift from under to over nutrition problem have been observed until recently there was little realization of severity of this problem in developing countries like india wang et al 2009 recent trends in indian population indicated a rise in obesity both in adults and children the paradox is that india like other developing countries suffer from dual health burden facing high rates of obesity coexisting with undernutrition and other chronic deficiency diseases kapoor et al 2009 in con- in contrast to some western countries which have observed a complete shift in bmi distribution curve most of the developing world is experiencing a dual nutritional burden with bmi curve getting fatter towards both the ends overweight for children and teenagers is usually calculated using the body mass index bmi a formula which combines values of height and weight it is not a direct measure of body fat but correlates well among most people with direct measures of body fat such as underwater weighing
a child's bmi is compared to a, a gender specific bmi age for growth chart to obtain a percentile ranking which shows the relative position of the child's bmi among others of the same gender and age a bmi percentile at the 95th or higher is classified as overweight and from 85th to 95th percentile as at risk for overweight recently an alternative classification system has been developed using growth curves created with the data from several different countries which identify bmi score for children aged 2 to 18 years in which a bmi of 25 overweight or 30 obese at 18 years of age other non invasive measures to define the degree of obesity include waist circumference waist to hip ratio to assess upper body fat predominance and skin fold thickness subscapular triceps suprailiac abdomen abdominal and their sum or ratios apart from these non invasive methods other validated parameters for measuring the degree of obesity also exist these methods are used to define body composition based on water fat protein and mineral content of the human body such direct measurements of body fat content include dual energy x-ray absorptiometry which is commonly called as dexa hydro densitometry or bioelectric impedance analysis bia however the use of such method in childhood and adolescence is limited due to several risks the applicability of technical equipment which is validated mainly for adult use is another concern these methods are currently used only for scientific reasons in the pediatric population corner et al 2007 now let us see the causes of childhood obesity various factors are responsible for the development of overweight and obesity among children body weight is shaped by a combination of genetic behavioral environmental cultural and socio economic influences additional factors that influence the degree of body fat mass are ethnic background gender developmental stage and age etc although the inter individual variation in bmi are attributable to genetic factors for the majority of individuals overweight and obesity results from excess energy consumption and or inadequate physical activity first is the genetic factors several studies in the past have suggested genetic influence on adiposity resulting in chronic positive energy balance bukhar 2008 more recently studies have attempted a search for molecular basis of obesity more than 430 genes markers and chromosome regions have been associated with the obese phenotype snyder et al 2004 the genetic study including twin studies suggest that more than 50% of the inter individual variations of bmi and the tendency to develop obesity is inherited as per snyder et al 2004 Now, during the past years, very few single gene obesity syndromes have been described. Monogenic cause of severe obesity that starts in early childhood include alteration of the OB gene, leptin. Storbell et al. 1998, the leptin receptor, Clement et al. 1998, and the melanocrotin receptor, MC4R, Faruqi et al. 2003. This syndrome accounts for up to 4 to 7% cases of severe obesity. Vesey et al. 2000. In contrast to defined monogenic cause of severe obesity, the number of sequence variants and mutations as well as polygenic causes that have been shown to be functional is quite large. A total of 42 different mutations in 130 individuals have been identified for the MC4R making mc4r mutation the most prevalent genetic cause of obesity identified to date these mutations are typically associated with early onset and rather severe obesity however not surprisingly the variation in phenotypic expression of obesity related to the mc4r gene points to variable 
penetrance and other genetic factors Snyder et al 2004 now one possible mechanism through which these mutations affect body weight is loss of normal regulation of food intake Farooqi et al 2003 as for the other genes a uh, missense R236G mutation in the POMC gene in unrelated children with severe obesity has been described. Charles et al. 2002. One report pertained to a family in which all affected members were overweight or obese and insulin resistance were double heterozygous for a premature stop mutation in PPARA. Savage et al. 2002. Although uh, several obesity cases identified so far could be ascribed to single gene defects, the polygenic approach towards many obesity cases is progressively revealed. Snyder et al. 2004. The load of information as for as a polygenic predisposition towards obesity and related disorders in children is increasing steadily. Recent data suggests that genetic variants and haplotype derived from ENPPI, nucleotide pyrophosphatase, phosphodiesterase 1, which encodes a membrane bound glycoprotein that inhibits the insulin receptor tyrosine kinase activity, resulting in reduced insulin sensitivity increases the susceptibility to obesity and early impairment of glucose and insulin metabolism in children as per Bocher et al. 2006. Apart from these genetic associations, Mendelian disorders exhibiting obesity as one of their clinical features have to be considered whenever a child has severe obesity. Such syndromes include the parader willi like Syndrome linked to 6Q16, 2Q14 and the SIM1 gene, the Bardet Beard 1 syndrome and the Fragile syndrome with Parader Willi like phenotype in which mutations in the FMR1 gene are present, as per Snyder and his co workers 2004. Next, let us discuss about the environmental factors. In the context of obesity, an environmental challenge is any behavior or lifestyle factor that has a bearing on energy intake or energy expenditure. Several lines of evidence support the premise that genetic factors alone cannot explain the demographic and ethnic variation in overweight and obesity prevalence. Although obesity has important genetic and familial components, the current epidemic has possibly resulted from technological advances. Koppelman 2000, Sivlan Toynen et al. 2010. In a genetically stable population, the rapid increase in obesity must reflect environmental effects. In at least 50% of the cases, obesity is attributable to the lifestyle changes. A chronic positive energy balance then leads to an increase in fat mass and body weight. Both increases. The development and severity of obesity is thus remarkably affected by lifestyle and environmental conditions in genetically predisposed individuals. That means a person is already predisposed and conducive environment does the rest. Nowadays, children are surrounded with obsogenic environment. The imbalance between calorie consumed and expended through physical activities caused by Opsogenic environment which encourages the overconsumption of energy dense food while reducing the opportunity for habitual physical activity. Modern environment provide ample opportunities for sedentary pastime and excessive food consumption in terms of high fat and sugar diet and increased portion size. A large number of obesity related risk factors are reported in literature. These operate during various stages of growth in children. Third is the sedentary behavior and physical activity. There have been researches showing the evidence of reduction in habitual energy expenditure in children. A national survey using parent 
report found that approximately one third of English children aged five years are not engaged in at least 60 minutes of physical activity daily. Stemetakiet et al. 2010. The physical activity level among children increased with age during the preschool period and gender differences in physical activity were present early in life. Physical activity in children can be measured either through a direct measurement of energy expenditure, observation or parental report. In school going children, there is an inverse relationship between physical activity levels and body fatness. In a longitudinal study by Moore et al. in 1995, it was reported that physical activity level at age 3 years were inversely related to body fatness at 5 years. Also that heavier children with low activity levels were found to gain more weight than lean children with low activity level. Then comes eating habits. Over the years, dietary habits and dietary pattern among young children have changed considerably. Children are eating more snacks than regular meals and often the timings are unfettered. Studies have reported a direct association between snacking and obesity in children. Snacking is often associated with more energy dense foods and drinks or more total food ingested particularly outside the home where the types of food commonly consumed as snacks are often high in fat or high in carbohydrates, sugar and or starch. Similarly, researcher at the Harvard School of Public Health examined 548 ethnically diverse children and found that those who had increased their intake of sugar, sugary and fuzzy beverages had in increase their body weight. The odds of this group of children becoming obese increased 1.6 times for each glass or can of soft drink consumed each day. Ludwig et al. 2001. Children's consumption of processed fruit, juice, sweetened drinks and snacks food have increased over the past 20 years. The increase in prevalence of obesity is considered with increase in energy intake of children. Now, in a UK-based cross-sectional survey, it was found that high-energy dense diet in young children was higher in fat and lower in sugar content than low-energy dense diet, Gibson 2000. The total dietary fat has been directly associated with adiposity. Next is socioeconomic and cultural factors. Now, majority of the epidemiological findings about child obesity disclose the fact that in highly developed countries, prevalence of obesity is inversely associated with education and socioeconomic status. Prentice in 2006. In developed countries, obesity may be a cause of economic disadvantage rather than a consequence as economic poverty or lack of education or both impair an individual's ability to repel the current obsogenic environment. In industrialized countries, children from lower economic families are more prevalent to gain weight in excess as low income families may face barriers like food security, lack of healthy food choices like fruits and vegetables and lack of clean environment for physical activity. In a household, the socio-cultural factors are the most investigated factors for assessing energy balance related behaviors. Every culture and community have their own set of preferences for food. Many communities have healthy choice including pulses, vegetables and fruits and some communities may have a tendency of eating fried and uh, fattening food with more fat. Also level of physical activity is influenced by family members. Next is obesity at infancy. During infancy there is rapid increase in body fat cells and changes in biological factors that influence the rate of growth of the child. During infancy, a number of growth and nutritional factors may influence the development of childhood obesity. In a systematic review, Ong, Ong and Luz 2006 identified 21 studies and reported positive association between weight gain in first two years of life and subsequent obesity. Another study in the WIC that is Women, Infant and Children program in New York state confirms the direct association of 0 to 6 months weight gain with BMI defined obesity risk at 5 years. Gilman 2008. 
Association between rapid catch-up growth and later obesity is also reported on et al. 2000. Really et al. 2005. Over the past 10 years, large number of epidemiological studies have focused on association between breastfeeding and childhood obesity. Positive association of breastfeeding and obesity was confirmed in childhood period by Armstrong and Rayleigh in 2002. During adolescence and in adulthood, many studies have investigated the relationship between breastfeeding and later overweight but some have found an inverse relationship as well. Arrange et al. 2004. Now, screen timing. Media contribution in the development of child and adolescent obesity has been researched well. Television viewing and media has also been used as a proxy for measuring sedentary behavior among children. Among children aged 2 to 3 years from the USA, 41% watched 3 or more hours of television daily and 27% of children aged 4 to 6 years used computer. Certain and Kahan 2002. Several research reports presented positive association between screen time and body fatness in school children. Larovi et al. 2010. In another study by Gottmaker et al. 1996, it was found that spending more than 3 hours per day watching TV was a risk factor for obesity in children after adjusting for potential confounders. Other studies also observed that more television exposure is a significant risk factor for the development of obesity among preschool children, Gupta and Kapoor, 2010. Children who have a television in their room are also more likely to be overweight than those without one. Next is duration of sleep. It's also a very important uh, risk factor. Now, duration of sleep also reported to be associated with children's weight. In a nationally representative sample of children aged 3 to 12 years, associations between sleep and BMI and the overweight state of children were estimated using longitudinal data. An extra hour of sleep towards young children 3 to 7.9 years of age, risk for being overweight from 36% to 30% and lessened older children's risk 8 to 12.9 years of age from 34% to 30 years. Snell et al. 2007. Sleep hours are important modulator of neurodendocrine functions and glucose metabolism. Sleep loss has been shown to result in endocrine and metabolic alterations including decreased insulin sensitivity, decreased glucose tolerance, increased evening concentrations of cortisol, Decreased level of leptin, increased level of ghrelin, increased appetite and hunger. Now let us discuss about the genetic and environmental interactions. There are extensive evidences that parental obesity is strongly associated with childhood obesity or overweight, conferring the risk through both shared genes and environmental factors. Researchers have opined that both genetic and environmental factors may contribute to obesity. Obesity is the quantitative extremes of the genetic and environmental influences that operated across the distribution of BMI. Now, genetic mutation alone cannot result in an obesity epidemic in all the population of the world over a few decades and despite of obsogenic environment, not everyone is obese. However, it is possible that genes and environment do not act independently but rather interact with each other so that genetic influence is stronger in higher risk environment. Next important component is adiposity rebound. The period of intrauterine infancy and preschool have all been considered as possible critical period during which the long term regulation of energy balance may be programmed for the development of obesity that persists into adulthood. However, little is known about the mechanisms that operate at each of these critical periods to entrain adult obesity. Adiposity rebound literally means a bounce back in adiposity. In earlier years of human growth, adiposity increases rapidly from the time of birth up to the age of one year and thereafter decreases and gets stabilized over 
next few years before rising again. The phenomena was first reported by Roland Cash et al. in 1984. Since then, many researchers have reported age at adiposity rebound in different populations. The range of the age of adiposity rebound is widely believed to be between 5 to 7 years of age. However, individual BMI curves drawn from children may differ regarding their percentile range level and age at adiposity rebound. Thus, some children may show an early or late dip in their respective BMI curve compared to others. Now, we will discuss comorbidities of childhood obesity. The increase in childhood obesity is leading to increase in the health consequences associated with excess body weight among children. Overweight and obesity in childhood and adolescence have adverse consequences on premature mortality and physical morbidity in adulthood. Now, obese children have higher risk of cardiovascular diseases, metabolic syndrome, high blood pressure, increased serum triglycerides levels and insulin resistance type 2 diabetes and increased cholesterol levels. It has been suggested that increasing prevalence of childhood obesity could result in shorter lifespan of children than their parents. Now, childhood obesity is a dynamic process in which cognition, behavior and emotional regulation interact with each other mutually. Apart from physical discomfort due to increased weight, obese children may also be affected in their psychological and physical well-being. Depression has been found to be associated with obesity among adolescents in which females are more prone as compared to their male counterparts. The children found to have fanatical concern due to social stigma regarding body image, poor self-perception of their physical appearance and low self-esteem. Now we come to the conclusion part of this module and we can summarize this module as follows. The prevalence of obesity among youngsters present epidemic proportion with significant implications for cardiovascular and metabolic health at a very early age in life. There are increasing rates of metabolic syndrome in children and adolescents which points towards the premature development of cardiovascular disease which is called CVD and diabetes mellitus type 2, DM2 commonly it is referred as DM2 in the next generation of adults. Insulin resistance determined by abdominal obesity appears to represent the link between the components of metabolic syndrome in this age range and functions as a predictor for CVD and disturbances in carbohydrate metabolism. Therefore, the obesity measurement should be considered a screening instrument. Therefore, the obesity measurement should be considered a screening instrument for the identification of youngsters with a cardiometabolic disease phenotype. As a consequence of this, abdominal obesity, insulin resistance, binomial, a systemic inflammatory state is produced which functions as a trigger for atherogenic process. The earlier the onset of overweight, the more prematurely this will manifest clinically. Therefore, in order to implement primary prevention of this endemic investigation, prevention, treatment of risk factors such as obesity, dyslipidemia and disturbances in carbohydrate metabolism and its consequences must begin in the initial stages of life. That's all in this module. Thank you very much.